Black Power. Black Power. Brothers and sisters, I want to start off by apologizing to New York City. I should have been with you for my last lecture of 2022 in, in, in the Bronx, but I fell ill. And so for the first time, I had to pull out of a Kwanzaa lecture. Never had to do that before, but my health was a little shaky at the time. I, it wasn't COVID, but it was something that knocked the wind out of me, so I had to cancel my DC lecture and then the Bronx. But I'm glad to be here back in New York City where it all started for me almost 13 years ago. So it's always good to come to New York, not just because it's the birthplace of my own personal uh, exaltation into black consciousness, but New York City has always been the mecca for Pan-Africanists from around the world. This is where El Hajj, Malik El Shabazz, son of the Garvey movement, this is where Malcolm became known to the world on a much greater level. It was here that Kwame Nkrumah, the first democratically elected president of the Republic of Ghana, became known on a much higher level. It is here that the first black newspaper was published, Freedom's Journal, 1829, by John Brown Rustworm of Jamaica, before Marcus Garvey, one of our great Pan-Africanists. It was from here that Henry Holland Garnett, first black preacher to speak to the United States Congress on the wall, on the hall floor of the U.S. government, he came to New York. Alexander Crummel came to New York, and I can go on and on and on, but all of the great Pan-Africanists came through New York, so it only makes sense that the Prince of Pan-Africanism comes through New York. Brothers and sisters, it's a new year. But although it's a new year, a lot of us have not shed our old skin. It's important that psychologically you shed your own your old skin. There must be something that you leave behind last year that you don't take with you into this year. One of the reasons that the snake is such a respected symbol in African culture, one of the reasons that the reptile is such a sacred animal in African culture, one of the reasons that the cobra is such a sacred animal in African culture is because it constantly renews itself over and over again. It sheds the old skin. And you have to shed your old skin. Some of you have to peel off that Negro pin and let the African shine through. Mm -hmm. Don't bring last year's Negro with you into this year. Bring your African self with you into this year, brothers and sisters. And let us be clear. It doesn't matter how well read you are. It doesn't matter how learned you are. It doesn't matter how conscious you are. It doesn't matter how long you've been working in the field of black consciousness. Everybody in this room, myself included, has a little bit of that Willie Lynch inside of us. Everybody in this room got a little bit of the psychological residuals of slavery within our belly. Every last one of us still suffers with that double consciousness that Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois talked about, brothers and sisters. And if we are going to get free as a people, if we are ever going to be, become politically free, economically free, culturally free, we must first free ourselves of the European that's taking up space inside your head. Mm -hmm. And every one of us got a European taking space up inside of our heads, brothers and sisters. Don't you kid yourself. In fact, if you won't even admit that you got a white person living inside of you, it's because you are being dominated by that white person living inside of you. Get serious and get focused. It's important that we as black men stop going back and forth with our sisters on the internet. We have to stop letting the whole world know it's okay to disrespect black women. We have to be better than that, black men. If we want to have a conversation with our sisters behind closed doors, and we will certainly have those conversations at the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy, don't have them on the internet for the whole world to see you disrespecting and condemning the mother of our children. This is the first month of 2023, the first month. So I'm going to kindly and respectfully ask that every black man in here today, if you are dating a non-African woman, I do not want you to go into Black History Month with that non-African woman. You have about 13 days to hear this program. Right? Don't take the crap. is the impact it has on the psychological respect black children have 
for the black family. Our daughters are watching us fight one another. Our sons are watching us fight one another. And we are doing this at a time when the United States government is pushing transgender culture on our children like they've never done it before. They're pushing interracial marriage and dating on our children like they've never done before. So if our children are watching us not getting along, if they're watching us at each other's neck, if they're watching us at constant conflict with one another, then maybe they will start to listen to the recommendations coming from the power structure. Never fight with your brother or sister in public. I ain't never seen a Chinese man fight a Chinese woman on the internet yet. I ain't never seen a Jewish man tell the Jewish woman in front of the whole world, you ain't shit. I ain't never seen it. I ain't never seen it. And no race is a utopia. Every race has their contradictions. Every race has their internal quarrels. But every race has a code of honor. And as black men, we have to get back to a code of honor. A set of behaviors that we will not violate because it gets the consciousness and spirituality of who we are. We got to get back to a code of honor. We have to do that, brothers and sisters. And as we get back to a code of honor, we have to understand that as we fight for reparations from the white power structure, we have to make sure we're fighting for internal reparations that the black community owes to itself. I support reparations. Reparation was born of the Pan-Africanist movement. But at the same time, I understand that we have things that we have to do that the white man ain't got no business being a part of. The white man ain't got no business being a part of the black male, female reconciliation movement. The white man ain't got no business being a part of how we gonna raise our children. He ain't got no business being a part of our loyalty to establish black businesses. He ain't got no business being a part of independent institutions and black Wall Streets. Brothers and sisters, we have to do some building. I hope we don't go into 2024 the same way we came into 2023. We need black institutions. Our people suffer because we are dependent on white people for our survival. Everything we need, we got to get it from him. We need food, we got to get it from him. We need health care, we got to get it from him. We need housing, we got to get it from him. We need transportation, we got to get it from him. How can we claim to be a self-respecting people with a $2 trillion budget and no institutions? How can we really tell our children we don't like the miseducation machine, but we won't build independent schools for our children? And let me say this to the black parents in the room. Don't you dare let one of these schools in New York City or New Jersey or Connecticut. Don't you dare let one of these schools try to manipulate you into getting your child evaluated for special education because they're a little bit behind in reading, a little bit behind in math. You know why they're a little bit behind? Because they was home for two years during the COVID, COVID quarantine. That's why they're behind. You don't tell, well, he's behind. He's in the third grade, reading on the fourth grade. Uh-uh. He's behind because, number one, y'all don't teach him. Number two, he don't practice. But number three, COVID sent him home for a year or two. Don't let the schools manipulate you, black parents. Special education is a hustle. Special education is a racket. Special education is a scam. And since New York City is the biggest community of Africans in this country, special education budget and the special education scam of New York City is the biggest one in the country. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's the biggest one in the country. And your charter schools can sometimes be worse than the public schools because they over rely on the special ed money. Sometimes your kid is more likely to be referred for special ed from the charter school than from the public school. Please be careful. Understand that the learning disability is an opinion. It's not a fact. Please be careful. Understand that intellectual disability is an opinion. It's not a fact. Please be careful. Understand that the emotional disturbance, the ADHD, the conduct disorder, the ODD, these are white people's opinions. They are not scientific, objectively provable facts. Right. So isn't it a shame yeah. that you got all these black boys in New York City entering the special ed to prison pipeline in kindergarten? Mm -hmm. 
entering the special ed to prison pipeline in first grade, entering the special ed to prison pipeline in the second grade, primarily due to the fact that their mother or father believes in what the white man has to say more than they believe in what the child can do. Mm -hmm. yeah. To limit the potential of a black child based on the opinions and assumptions of a cracker is insane. But we do it every day. But we do it every day. Brothers and sisters, every year that we wait to get active about our survival, every year that we wait to get active about our resurrection as a people, the white man brings in another group of immigrants to further push you down the social ladder. I was reading an article the other day. It said that the Ukrainians are now eligible for SSI income. The Ukrainians, who are not even citizens of America, can now pull up to the SSI office and get SSI money. They're going to get a check. I think they said a maximum of $900. $940 a month per Ukrainian. They didn't build a single building in this country. They didn't lay a brick, they didn't pick the cotton, they didn't cure the sugar or the tobacco, but they're going to get government funds and they're not even citizens. I heard the Afghani refugees are going to get the same thing. So one of the reasons that the white man is bringing the Afghanis in and bringing the Ukrainians in is because the white man is losing his numerical majority in this country. His numbers are shrinking. And since the Ukrainians are Europeans, and since Arabs are considered European in America for the purpose of the U.S. Census, they figure if we're losing white people, let's just import some by way of Ukraine and Afghanistan. And I also want you to understand that the Asians, the Chinese and the Japanese, they are the new surrogate Europeans in this country. The white man and the Asian are in a collaboration against the African. The brown man and the white man are working together to eliminate the black man. This is why they got the anti-Asian hate laws passed so fast. Because America needs the Asians of America to back them up against the blacks. And this is why all of you young college students and all of you colorblind religious Negroes. You better get off of the multicultural bandwagon before the multicultural bandwagon runs us over. There is no multiculturalism in America. Nobody has ever practiced multiculturalism in this country except black folks. The Asians are here for political economic domination. The Mexicans are here for political economic domination. The, the, the European Jews are here for political economic domination. Everybody in America, the East Indian and so forth and so on, they are here to dominate. Nobody comes to share. Black people, get it out of your mind that all, all people of color are somehow one family. What has the Mexican done for the black community? Nothing. I don't hate the Mexican people, I wish them well, but they've never done nothing for me. I don't hate the Latino people, I wish them well, but they've never done nothing for me. We don't push or practice hate against any group. But none of these groups have ever struggled with black people, but they have all benefited from your struggle. You've given, but you've never received. Get off the multiculturalism bandwagon. Two nights ago, I had an Asian send me a text message. Young Asian gentleman, he sent me a text message. He said, Dr. Umar, I support Black Lives Matter. I support freedom for black people. I support reparations and justice for African people. Would you mind if I put out a hashtag that says something like Asians for African Americans? And I said, absolutely not. I don't support that because that is opportunism. If you as an Asian want to be for African Americans, you damn sure don't need a hashtag to go along with it. Because what you're trying to do is exactly what the European Jews did to black people back in the 1920s. They told the whole world they was for us so they could benefit from everything that we fought and died for. And once they stole all the resources and opportunities from black people, they disappeared from the black community. If you're going to be for us, be for us. But you don't need a hashtag to go along with us. For my mixed race Africans, I'm going to make it real plain and simple for you. I accept you like I accept any other African, as long as you know who you are and you accept it. If you want to be considered a biracial, I don't accept you. Because when you say you are a biracial, what you're telling me is, you know you can't be white, but you ain't comfortable enough being black. That's what biracial means. 
That's what biracial means. You know you can never be white, but you're not willing to be called black. So you want to be on the fence. There is no fence. Make up your mind. White folks know exactly who you are when they see you walking down the street. They have no qualms. And for the brothers and sisters who are caught up in this war of identity, every 25 years, we got to go through an identity crisis. I don't know what it is about black folks in America. Well, I do know what it is. It's post-traumatic slavery disease. But every 25 years, we got to go through an identity crisis. So we got Native American Negroes, we got Freedmen, we got ABOS, we got FBA, and ain't none of them built a single institution for black people. Listen to me. You don't suffer for what you call yourself. We can change our name all day. We can all become Moors tomorrow. We can all become Pan-Africanists tomorrow. We can all become Hebrews tomorrow. We can all become FBA tomorrow. But guess what? The treatment you receive from the white man will not change. It is not because of your name. It is because of your condition. Conditions dictate how you get treated. So we can keep on playing this name game all you want. Political scrabble in the black community. Well, I was here before slavery. What institution does that create? What problem did that solve? As I've said so many times before, I'm not going to argue with you over who you want to be. All self-hating people love to disidentify from who they really are. It's the circumstance of our condition. But the minute black people get their act together, the minute we are captains of our own fate, the minute we are in control of our own politics and economy, every freeman, FBA, ADOS, Latino, and everybody else hiding under other non-African non names will gladly proclaim that they are happy to be African. It's all a result of conditions. We were here before slavery, but you came from Africa. You were the first Native Americans, but you came from Africa. Africa is the birthplace of all humanity. There is no people in North America, no people in Asia, no people in Europe, no people in South America that were there before we were there. We've already done this, we've been through this. But some of you young people like listening to a bunch of politically uneducated YouTubers who's stealing somebody else's information that they stole from somebody else's information and they call it facts. But call yourself what you want. I only got one question. What are we going to come together and build for our women? What are we going to come together and build for our daughters? What are we going to come together and build for our queen mothers? It is not about intellectual masturbation over identity. Intellectual masturbation over identity is a waste of time. I want to know who's ready to build. Because I can build with Nation of Islam. I can build with a Hebrew. I can build with a Nawapian. I can build with a God in Earth. I can build with a Bible toting Christian in the Quran toting Muslim as long as they bring the bill. In fact, I can probably build better with them. Because in a conscious community, we get so puffed up with ego because we read five or six books from the Schomburg collection. And now we know everything and know so much that we're too smart to do any work. Do you realize the smartest people you know are the least likely to get off their behinds and do something in the black community? Is it not a shame that I'm the only one of my generation in black consciousness to build a real school? I didn't say a basement. I didn't say a home. I didn't say a church. I didn't say a storefront. I didn't say a community center. I said a real school. Where are the other institutions at? Black women, one of the things we're going to do as soon as the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy is ready, we're going to have a regular ongoing black women's symposium where black women can come together as black women to talk about black women's problems. Because I have a big problem with the fact that the leading group that is taking their own life in America right now are our 14 to 17 year old daughters. Black girls 14 to 17 lead America in suicide. You know why? They don't have women they can talk to. They have emotional conflict issues with their mother. 
father may not be there. They may have been the victims of molestation, pedophilia, incest, unaddressed. Many of them got anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder issues as a result of sexual abuse and exploitation. Black girls need black women, and we have to create the context whereby the sisters can help the girls. One of the reasons black children, male or female, have issues respecting us as their elders is because we force them to make a living on their own with no support as children. When a teenage girl has a baby and has to sell her body to feed her baby, you can't go back and say, sit down and listen to me, I'm your elder. Because her question is going to be, if you are my elder, where was you when I had to sell my baby to get my, to sell my body to get my baby milk and pepper? If you were my elder, where were you when I was getting pregnant and you should have stopped me? See, we as adults are the parents of all black children in our community. And one of the mindsets we have to shift in 2023, brothers and sisters, is we have to walk around conscious of the fact that every child is my child. Until everybody in New York City sees every black child in New York City as your own child, we don't win. Until every American African sees every American African as their own brother and sister, we don't win. One of the reasons it's so difficult for American Africans to activate God consciousness is because one of the manifestations of God is the divine oneness of all African people. The reason we can't tap in the reason we don't get the type of blessings that you read about in your holy books is in order for the one God to help you, we have to become one as a people. Mm -hmm. exactly. See, if all you want to be is an emancipated Negro being, spirit can't come to your end. Mm -hmm. The reason many of you want reparations is not to improve black Brooklyn. You're not thinking about what's best for us, our family in Queens. You ain't pondering Staten Island's future. Harlem ain't on your mind. Your issue is you want some money so you can go and buy some stuff white people make. That's why you want reparations. I just read an article the other day. There's a group of Asians who started a pro-black reparations support group. You got Asians fighting for black reparations. Why would the Asians be fighting for you to get reparations? I think we already know. Because they know the minute you get paid, your reparations is their salvation. They know it. Which is why I argue that there must be a transformation in consciousness before there can be a revolution in reality. We have not changed the way that we think. I don't care how many books. You got to change the way you think. I don't care how many trips to Africa. You got to change the way you think. I don't care how many spiritual initiations you've been through. Because I didn't see Negroes get initiated to the ancestors. I didn't see Negroes get initiated into the medic science. I didn't see Negroes get initiated into voodoo. I didn't see Negroes get initiated into Ifa. I didn't see Negroes get initiated into Santeria, Palo, Lukumi, Dogon. And guess what? The cracker was still with them after the initiation. So until we change the way that we function, and I want to be clear, it don't take a whole army of people to force others to think a different way. You just have to be committed in your mind to what you stand for. There's a scientific experiment in psychology. It's called the hundredth monkey experiment. And they studied these little primates, and they noticed that it only took one monkey to do it right in the other 99 automatically follows. Now we know we ain't no monks, but we are living, breathing organisms. And if we are going to be consistent as the black consciousness community, no matter what the ideology may be, we can transform the minds of the rest of our community, but we got to be consistent. The problem is everyday black people get two different messages from us. Once in a while, we look like we want to be free. But then once in a while, we look like we want to creep back into the white power structure. See, we keep on flip-flopping. Mm -hmm. 
You, 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 you conscious on the weekend, but you never going to be here during the weekend. <laughs> and let us be honest, one of the reasons it's so hard for most of us to close the door on white supremacy once and for all is because of economics. Everybody's concerned about their money. Everybody's concerned about their bag. This is why we got more sellouts in the black community than we have in any other race. Because we more than any other race are dependent on white folks for our bills to get paid. That's why you can't do this work if you're not economically independent. I cannot be as free with my speech if I was not economically independent. You got to have your own source of income. I didn't say just jump out there and start your own business, but start working towards it. Start studying what it is you're going to do. And for my young people, I'm telling you now, college is increasingly becoming an economic trap for you all. If you're going to go to college, go to college because you're majoring in something that is relevant. Do not go to college unless you are certain that what you are majoring in equals some sort of business opportunity when you get out. Because there's too many young people graduating magna cum laude in earthworm technology. <laughs> Unemployed and broke with a PhD from Harvard. Yep. Brothers and sisters, make it make sense. You know, when we left the 1970s, over 40% of African Americans were in the agricultural and farming industry. One of the things we need to go back to, especially since we live in food deserts, we need to go back to agricultural science. We need to pick up Dr. George Washington Carver. You want a business idea? Learn how to grow your own food and go around black America starting community gardens. You'll make all the money you want to make. We got to get back to agriculture, brothers and sisters. One of the things we're doing at FDMG is we're looking into farmland right now for our agricultural curriculum for our boys and ultimately for our girls. And I want to say thank you to New York City. Thank you to New York City for standing by me these past nine years because it has not been easy. It has been one hell of a roller coaster trying to get that elementary school done. We were sabotaged by blacks, whites, you name it. Undercut, undermined it. GoFundMe shut down by your YouTube struggle streamers, IRS audit, CIA, FBI, Attorney General, Mayor of this city, Mayor of that city, Governor of Pennsylvania, Governor of Delaware. Every weapon that they could throw at us to stop this school, and most of it was black folks. Yep, none shall prosper. Most of it was black folks. They threw weapons. And just yesterday, I got a prank pulled on me. I was talking to a brother on the phone. He said he was a roofer. I said, okay. He said, I want to come look at that leak you got. I can fix it. I'm a licensed roofer. So we texted back and forth for a couple of days. How about I go to the school? We were supposed to meet yesterday. At about 11 o'clock, I'm at the school waiting for him. I said, brother, where you at? You told me you was 10 minutes away. He texted me back and said, unless the school opens next month, I can't help you. Uh -oh. It was a prank. A black person. These are the games that we've been going through for nine years, brothers and sisters. But with that being said, I'm pleased to announce that we are 99% done with the Marcus Garvey. Yeah. Yeah. Approved. Electric, repaired, inspected, approved. Sprinklers, repaired, inspected, approved. Alarm system, repaired, inspected, approved. Fire system, repaired, inspected, approved. The only thing we wait right now is we got to get some sensors on the HVAC system. The old sensors burned out while the school was closed and the battery acid spilled over onto them. So the HVAC company ordered new sensors. They said they should be in next week. Once they put them sensors in, all should go well with the HVAC. The only thing left now is to clean up the floors and paint the walls and do the grand opening. So with that being said, if you're interested in working at the school, send me your resume. I don't care if you're 18 or 88. If you have something to offer our children, please send me your resume. Do not be concerned about being licensed at this time. That's irrelevant. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But if you have a skill that you believe our children are worth learning, send me your resume. Some of you sisters know how to sew clothes. Dr. Umar, I want to come down. I'm retired, but once a weekend, I'm going to come down and teach them how to make their own clothes. Some of you know how to go fishing. 
Some of you know how to go snorkeling. Some of you know investing like the back of your hand. Some of you know doctor, documentary filmmaking. Some of you know horse raising. I met a sister who raises horses. She said she's going to come and help us get our own FDMG horse state. I met a brother who know how to make shoes in Ohio. He's going to come and teach the boys how to make their own shoes. I met another brother. He's a shellfish crabber. He's going to teach the young men how to go shellfish crabbing for scrimps and oysters and, lo and uh, lobsters and so forth and so on. So whatever skill you got, as long as you ain't a snow bunny. Consider this in a resume. You can be a volunteer. You can be an employee. And for my elders, I'm going to have a special conference for those over the age of 60 to come to the school to pour your wisdom into our project. What I mean by that is I want the elders' vision and the elders' wisdom to be brought forth so I can include it as necessary in the FDMG design. So you might be a retired teacher. What did you never see in schools that we need to have in ours? Mm -hmm. You might be a retired language teacher. What languages do you think are best suited for our children to learn? You might be a retired dry cleaners owner. Can you come and teach our people, our boys, the art of dry cleaning, which was invented by black people in the first place? We're going to have home economics. I need a kitchen staff who's going to be able to do raw and vegan food because we're going to be 90% raw and vegan. Maybe that is you. I need sisters who can do natural hair because when we open up the girls' academy, I need our girls to have natural hair because they cannot come to the school if they're not happy to be nappy. And you cannot work at the school if So please send me your resume. The email address has not changed. But I want to say this. If you have not donated to the school, your application will not be considered. How dare you look for a job from a school you ain't give one penny to in nine years. You will not be considered for a job if you did not donate these nine years to the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy brothers and sisters. If you are one of my haters and detractors, don't bother. Because you are in the book of Negroes, you just don't know it yet. Okay? I want serious people for serious work. But in addition to the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, and we plan on having eight bus stops, brothers and sisters. We're going to have a bus stop in Camden, New Jersey, a bus stop in Trenton, New Jersey, a bus stop in Baltimore, Maryland, a bus stop in Eastern Shore, Maryland, a bus stop in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, a bus stop in Chester, Pennsylvania, a bus stop in Dover, Delaware, and a bus stop in Wilmington, Delaware, four states. Now, you all are in New York. So how can your son benefit from a school that's two hours away? Number one, we still need FDMG New York. In fact, let me tell you a little piece of history. We almost had FDMG Mount Vernon, New York. Wow. We're going to lease a Catholic school in excellent condition in Mount Vernon about four years ago. And then the manager of the school told me he had to call Rome in Italy. True story. True story. He said, I got to call the Vatican and get permission for you to operate the school. And we all know what the answer was. I did not know it, but he told me about 20% of the Catholic schools in America are operated directly from the Vatican. I did not know that. Yes. Yes, yes, 20% of the schools in America are operated directly from Rome, Italy, brothers and sisters. But we was almost in Mount Vernon, but we still need to get a school in one of the boroughs, and then ultimately, we need a school in all of the boroughs. Now, New York City real estate is so expensive, we might not be able to afford to purchase it right out, but maybe we can lease it. So as you're out in your travels through the five boroughs, look for a school that can be leased because we can start with a lease so we can get the education for our boys started right here in New York City. 
We're also working on a virtual platform that would allow your sons and daughters to be able to sign in to the school platform in the morning and get their education from your house while we're in Wilmington. They can be right in the classroom and see their classmates and teachers, and classmates and teachers can see them as well. So that's the virtual platform, but that's about two or three years away, brothers and sisters. In addition to that, we will have a black boy academy, black male academy, so you will be able to bring your sons down to the school on the weekends and on holidays and during the summer, and your son can join in with the full-time students of the FDMG Academy when we go hiking, when we go camping, when we go to Africa, when we go gun training, when we do martial arts. Your sons can still be a part of the FDMG family, even if they're not a student there. I need y'all all to know that. I need you all to know that. Brothers and sisters, as I stand here today, I want to say that we owe our ancestors a great deal of internal reparations. As I stand here, I think of John Henry Clark, I think of Dr. Ben, I think of John Jackson, I think of Shake and the Chope, I think of Renouk Rashidi, who we lost, I think of Ida B. Wells and Fannie Lou Hamer. I think of Queen Mother Harriet Tubman. I think of Queen Mother Amy Ashwood Garvey, whose birthday was two days ago, co-convener of the 1945 Pan-African Conference. I even think of my ancestors from other lands. I think of Maurice Bishop. I think of Marcus Garvey. I think of Peter Tosh. I think of Nanny of the Maroons, Queen Nzinga, Yad Santi. I think of Robert Sabukwe and Chris Ani. I think of Steve Biko, Nelson, and Winnie Mandela. I think of Amakal Cabral, Didi Kamafi, Julius Lieri, Seiko Torre. I think of them all, brothers and sisters. One thing I need you all to understand, we are a race of people. We are not a tribe. Stop donating and dedicating yourself to tribe. But listen, yes, there are Negroes around the world. There's Negroes in Africa. There's Negroes in America, there's Negroes in the Caribbean, there's Negroes in Canada, there's Negroes in Europe. Everywhere you go, there's Negroes, but guess what? At the end of the day, we all still want African people. And we better learn to rise together because divided, we can only fall, brothers and sisters. Let nobody manipulate you into thinking that it's better for you to be concerned only about your group and not the overall direction of us as a race. The white man does not break black people up into groups. You should know this by now, okay? Go ask Bill Cosby if you think you get broke up into groups. They use the best of us to destroy the least of us. And when they destroy the least of us, they come to destroy the best of us. We are all one people. When it comes to the white man, there are no differences whatsoever. In fact, Napoleon, Bonaparte, who was destroyed by the Haitians during the Haitian Revolution, Napoleon told his general when they were trying to get the so-called mixed-race mulattoes of Haiti on their side against Toussaint and Dessalines, guess what Napoleon said? His general said, Emperor, are these mulattoes not niggas themselves? And Napoleon said, yes, they are but you are never to let them know that you see them the same as you see the black Haitian slaves. He said, in their mind, convince them that they are special. In their mind, convince them that they are different. But in your mind, forever remember that they are an enemy just like the black ones. They'll use the light skin against the dark skin. They'll use the college educated against the brother on the corner. They'll use the straight hair against the nappy hair. They'll use the African immigrant against the ones who built this country. They always play the body and conquer separate me. The question is, will you fall for it? Nope. Young people, I need you all to understand that all white people are racist. Mm -hmm. There are no exceptions at all. that you should hate white folks. Because I don't want you hating anybody. Ever. If I can hold the door open for a white woman, she behind me, I'll hold it. If I can help a little white girl stay out of special ed, I'll help her. They don't get help before black girl, they don't get help before black woman, but if I got time, I'll help her. 
I don't believe in hating no group, but you must understand the psychological mindset of the European. He is a savage. He is brutal. He is inhumane. And most of all, he is ruthless. He is absolutely dedicated to domination of the planet by any means necessary. Look at the nonsense that's going on in Haiti right now. America want to keep making you think Haiti being overran by drug laws. And I'm not saying that some of that ain't true. But who's really keeping Haiti destabilized? Mm -hmm. Is it the drug laws or is it the United States military? And why do they want Haiti so much? Why can't Haiti be left alone? Now, we know part of it is due to that revolution of 1791. We know that, but that's not the only reason. Did you know that the island of Haiti has one of the largest untapped repositories of gold? Did you know the island of Haiti has one of the largest untapped repositories of copper. Did you know the island of Haiti has one of the largest untapped depositories of natural gas in the Western Hemisphere? And most importantly to the white power structure. Most importantly to the white power structure. Haiti is one of three countries in the world who have an extremely large abundance of a natural mineral known as iridium. When you go home, I want you to Google iridium. I-R-I-D-I-U-M. Iridium. Russia has it. Haiti has it. And one other country has it. Do you know what iridium is used for? Atomic weapons. Nuclear technology. Iridium is a mineral that you put over other minerals that can withstand almost any temperature you put on it. So if you're releasing bombs, if you're releasing missiles, and you need them to survive the heat so they can impact their target, iridium is one of the best substances you can get. And the reason America needs Haiti to remain devastated and undeveloped is so that Haiti cannot start bargaining and selling her natural resources in order to empower herself. Haiti would be great if America left her the hell alone. And the reason I believe, and the reason I believe that the Haitian president was assassinated is because he refused the COVID vaccination. John Michael Foley because he refused the vaccinations. And thank God the president of Ghana finally repealed his decision to force us to get vaccinated in order to come into the country. Thank God he repealed that. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to close in a few minutes and take a few questions, but I want to say this. I'm working on two projects, one domestic one on the continent, because as a Pan-Africanist, we believe we fight for our people where we are, and we fight for the ultimate salvation of all our people on the continent. The whole world is the kingdom of Africa. 